Epps had at the party on November 5th, 2011? She had one cup of beer and two jello shots. One cup of beer and two jello shots. Now, um, didn't uh, uh, Lindsey Haynes give you a different vantage point on how much beer that Miss, uh, uh, is either Lindsey Haynes or uh, Wade Hunter, uh, a different vantage point on how much beer that Miss Capps consumed at that party? I believe she did. What, what do you believe her testimony was, sir? From what I recall, I believe she said uh, Kelly had taken a few drinks from the beer and said she didn't like it. Okay. So Kelly Capps tells you she consumed the entire beer, right? Yeah, that's what she told me. Well, yes, yeah, she told us she had the cup of beer. Yes, yes. And Lindsay Haynes testified that Kelly Capps took a couple sips of the beer. In fact, didn't Lindsay Haynes, that much is correct, yes? Yes. And didn't Lindsay Haynes testify that, uh, that uh, when they received, they mean Wade Hunter, Lindsey Haynes, and uh, Kelly Capps, they received a cup of beer, they passed it among themselves yes. uh, for, uh, to, to see if they liked it or not? Yes. And Lindsey Haynes told you that Kelly Capps didn't like the beer that she, that, that she had tasted? Yes. Okay. So Kelly, Lindsey Haynes testified uh, that Lindsey, I'm sorry, Lindsey Haynes testified that Kelly Capps did not con consume the entire cup of beer. Is that right? I believe that's what she said. Okay. Now, uh, whose testimony did you credit there? Uh, uh, you uh, uh, you said initially that Kelly Capps drank a cup of beer and two Jello shots. Uh, Lindsey Haynes said it didn't go down that way. Uh, uh, whose testimony did you credit in, in formulating uh, your conclusions? Well, you have Kelly Capps who's saying that she consumed the, the alcohol. Whether she drank a whole cup or just drank a couple sips, she was still drinking the alcohol. Right the so you you didn't treat that as as, as a, a a significant aspect of your investigation. Not necessarily. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about, um, and Wade Hunter, uh, he was 21 years of age at the time of the party. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about the criminal prosecution of Mr. Dean for a moment, if we can. Now, um, I'm going to show you charging was Ms. Jones, did you already provide a witness a copy of the, the, the charging affidavit of Mr. Dean? I believe I did. Do you have that? Um, the 707? Yes. Um, yes, I have it. And did you provide a more copy? I believe we did. Yeah. yeah, they have it. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. All right, great. Um, sir, you recognize this as the charging affidavit being the Travis Dean? Yes. Okay. Now, if you'll notice um, uh, down uh, in the, the narrative section, uh, it, 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 it would appear to say it charges Mr. Dean with two separate offenses. Yes, it does. It charges him with a violation of 562.11, a misdemeanor of the second degree, correct? Correct. And it also charges him with. Uh, I'll have to get glasses eventually. 856.015. Oh, I see. 856.0152, also a misdemeanor in the second degree, correct? Yes. Now, the, you agree with me, sir, that the 562.11 charge uh, was dismissed by the court? Yes. Uh, and can you tell uh, 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 the board uh, what that charge pertains to? The giving alcohol to persons under the age of 21. Okay. Do you know why the court dismissed it, sir? I don't. Now, um, uh, I happen to have. Let me ask you this. In your investigation, uh, despite the fact that the court dismissed the, vi the violation, the, the, the accusation Mr. Dean uh, provided alcohol to minors, did you also investigate, did you actually investigate that as part of your act? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you investigate why the court dismissed that, that, portion of, uh, that portion of the complaint against him? No, I did not. Okay. So did you actually investigate uh, as part of the IA, the allegation that Mr. Dean violated 562.111A? I investigated to see if he violated the misdemeanor injuries to the department, which okay. includes this, yes. Well, uh, just so I'm clear, I understand that, uh, that you didn't investigate him for a criminal violation. For, uh, you investigated him to see if he, among other things, violated that portion of the rules that 
indicate that a mis misdemeanor injury to the department is subject to a violation subject to dismissal, correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, as in, in uh, making or conducting your investigation, did you use that statute 562.111A as your guidepost to whether or not you violated a, a misdemeanor injuries to the department? It would be used, yes, as a guideline. Yes. Okay. Did you use anything else in, in anal analyzing whether or not you provide alcohol to minors? No. Okay. Let me um, provide this. Copy this to the board. I may. This is a copy of five school. I think one to you. You mind if I look on with you? <laughs> sure. Great. I'm sorry. Um, this is a copy of the Florida Statute 562.11. You see that there? I do. And the portion that's uh, uh, alleged in the narrative uh, is 562.111A. I read from the charging affidavit. And as you say, this was your guidepost in determining whether or not Mr. Dean committed the violation of a misdemeanor injurious to the department, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, this statute, sir, reads, I'm going to have to read over your shoulder, I apologize for that. Under 1A, it is unlawful for any person to sell, give, serve, or permit to be served alcoholic beverages to a person under 21 years of age or to a permit a person under 21 years of age to consume such beverages on a licensed premises, on the licensed premises. Mr. Uh, Dean wasn't operating a licensed premise at his home, was he? A licensed premise to, to, to serve alcohol? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so would you agree with me, sir, that this statute doesn't apply to Mr. Dean? As far as the criminal charge? Well, uh, you used uh, this statute uh, uh, as, a, as a guidepost for determining whether or not Mr. Dean committed a misdemeanor injurious to the department. Specifically, did he committed a violation of 560? 5-6, what is it, 5-6-6? Uh, correct? Correct. Uh, you can see from that reading that statute, sir, that 1A applies to only licensed premises, don't you? I believe during your direct examination by Ms. Jones that you say, you said rather, that Deputy Dean gave permission for the party goers to someone to play beer pong on his car. Is that right? Yes, that's what Kelly Capps told us. Okay. Did anybody else tell you that? No. Okay. Just Kelly Capps? Yes. Okay. Is there any point during uh, your uh, interviews or any point thereafter did you come to question the credibility of Ms. Capps? Um, on certain things, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, what things were those? The incident uh, regarding her domestic violence arrest. Okay. I'm sorry, the arrest of the boyfriend. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Sir, do you recognize this document? I do. Um, and you recognize that it to be photographs that were taken at Travis Dean's phone during the course of the internal investigation? Yes. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to have to leer over your shoulder again. I apologize for unholy yeah, minutes. You do? Yeah. Okay. Too. They're easier to read. Ooh, great. Thank you so much. All right, now, these photographs, they were taken by 
review by yes. Mr. Pew, by Pat. And that was done, I guess, at the Sheriff's Office somewhere? That was at uh, Deputy Dean's house. Okay. Now, um, uh, this is a series of text messages between uh, Travis Dean and uh, with uh, Ms. Capps, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, I want to draw your attention to uh, 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 the uh, text messages that begin about midway down the page of that, uh, that first um, phone screen that we see there. Uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong here. It states, hey, what are you doing? Drive in at Ms. Capps talking, correct? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dean responds, driving to the jail, what's up? Next page, Ms. Capps responds, well, about to head to Stevens, I guess, having a party there, I guess. So I'll talk to you later. Have a good night, hubby. Have fun. Be safe, YB. This is Travis Dean talking. I'm here all night. You won't need anything. You be safe, too, and thank you. Later on, that same uh, series of text messages, he writes back and says, hey, what are you doing? You notice this call was, that text message was sent about 3 o'clock in the morning, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tara Steen responds, driving to the jail, what's up? Kelly Capps responds, honestly, I might need you to get me. He replies, how soon? She writes, IDK, IDK which I'm going to take you and I don't know. I might have some, I might have one, some, I might have someone to get me. I'll let you know what we got in a huge fight. He writes back, let me know, and also about another deputy to pick you up if I'm not back yet. He writes back, oh, thank you so much. I don't know what to do. He left and he has no phone. Is she referring to Stephen to the hut at this point? Yes. He has punched holes in the walls and left. I think he cracked himself. I don't know what to do. Um, that message repeats. Skipping down to her next text message. Kelly Capps writes, yeah, I know. He's been drinking, so he's acting psycho. He hit me. I'm on my way home now, but I honestly think he's going to crash himself. <coughs> now, do you think that text message gave Travis Dean probable cause for arrest of Stephen DeHutt? Punching holes on walls, <coughs> states that, that Dean, or excuse me, DeHutt hit her. Well, Obviously, you would have to ask more questions about what took place. Okay. Uh, and what, what other questions would you anticipate that you would ask her? Well, you'd have to ask her what was the nature of the argument, um, where were you injured, uh, did he strike with any weapons? Mm -hmm. So just having a, a, someone say to a deputy that another person hit them uh, is not enough to, to, to form a, a probable cause in your mind for an arrest for battery? Well. It's a, it's a very short statement. He hit me. 